YouTube, 2T, welcome back. It's Blackpool, the aftermath, the carnage. Oh God, <laughs> fucking broken. What can I say? This year, I think uh, Blackpool probably broke me. It's fair to say, me and, and numerous other people I spoke to, um, we're all getting a little bit, bit old uh, for them shenanigans. We could talk about shenanigans and God knows what that's later on. Um, but wow, what a fucking weekend. What an absolute fucking balter. We know, I think look, most of us probably thought it was going to be good, but it was, um, yeah, it was it was a lot better um, than, you know, I anticipated and I thought. And I, I attempted, attempted the unattemptable. And I've got a hopefully definitive list well not definitive because it's obviously a stupid thing to say but the people that i've sort of said hello to uh, and obviously there was numerous people there that i didn't know who they were uh, that's just the way it is i can't know everybody um but yeah it's um when i sort of sat down and tried to rack my adult brain it's actually more people i think big mike uh, was probably right in, in the figures but we'll go through that later anyway you know we'll we'll do like um I don't know, a collective view or something of it all. Because I've, and this is the other thing, I've got more stuff than I realised. Um, and I only bought two things from the fucking, the actual show itself. But again, it's, um, you know, something we'll chat about afterwards. <sighs> what is it, what are we on now? It's been a week, has it been a week? Yes, it's been a week. Fucking hell. feels longer than that. But, um, yeah, an absolute cracking weekend. Um, there are plans afoot, and I don't suppose Andy Brown will mind me uh, saying it because he told me anyway, he knows I'm a big fucking gobshite. But he just sort of said this, but this was probably the last, obviously talking past tense now, um, the last time it would be at the Norbreck. So I can hear you all cheer. <laughs> and a collective fucking, you know, sigh of relief that it's no longer going to be there. Uh, I, I mean, all I know is it, there's plans afoot to, to move to the Winter Gardens. Don't really know, you know, Blackpool itself that well. Um, a few of the lads sort of said it was behind the, the, the tower, so more centralised. Apparently, it's going through some sort of refurb. If that's, a, it, I don't know if it's that's what uh, normal people class as a refurb, which is you know fucking strip it all down and make it all nice. Or it's a Blackpool refurb, which means lick of paint on the outside and some new uh, seat covers. I don't know, um, but. I say, you know, the uh, the plan moving forward is that it will be at this Winter Gardens place, which, to be honest, I don't think is a bad thing. Um, I think part of the catalyst of that, all the, all the probably the, you know, the final nail in the coffin was the parking issue, where they sort of started charging and didn't tell him. Um, but obviously, they've, he's had problems with them before, where they've, they've moved dates, changed dates on him and stuff. So I think he's probably uh, even is had enough. Uh, but it is what it is. I mean, it's got this, you know, served its purpose, as me and Dad sort of said. It was, you know, it did what it, what it said on the tin sort of thing. And it's quite a spacious uh, venue. But, you know, so that's something to, to look out for for next year, perhaps. I'm just looking at fucking piles of stuff here. It's ridiculous. I've watched some videos. Nice to sort of um, tease people, get other people's views on it. Um, you know, you go for different things. Some people go for the actual event itself. Some people just go for the social and that's it. Some people do a little bit of both. Um, you know, and depending on who you are, your view will be, oh, it's shit or it's great or, you know, and obviously everyone always says that the actual Norbrek itself is, is cack. The turn this down, it's really loud. So I think you kind of have to take the Norbrek out of the equation sometimes a little bit. Um, but I say we rocked up. I meant at first. I should say this first because I've got a list here. But I'm going to say it because it needs to be said at the top of the show. Basically, many thanks to my mate Rob who drove us there. Um, I think us and along with God knows uh, probably half a dozen other people literally got fucking slam jammed into a, some sort of. It wasn't even a fucking traffic jam. It was just really bad congestion in into Blackpool. Um, oh yeah, we left here in the Midlands, sort of half 12 and we didn't get there till like quarter to five ish something like that i think so yeah it was and it's only like three hours away it only took us three hours to get home 
uh, but it is what it is and you can't you know it is just how it that's just the way the uh, the cookie crumbles as they say so yeah massive thanks to Rob fucking made the weekend mate it's always a good time with Rob um, such a fucking laid-back bloke honestly he's, 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 he's that fucking laid-back he's got hinges for ankles right so I say we rocked up eventually on the Friday night met in the Norbrek um, and I'm gonna say this now I didn't like that little bar I know but it, it, it's the first and last time I didn't like it I thought it ruined the ambiance the atmosphere I think the the collective group didn't flow it was two pockets of people I didn't like it didn't like it one bit uh, and then some people that went for the first time you know there's, and there's a number of people on here wouldn't know any different and that's fine uh, but them that have been before, you know, and they're hopefully, well, they might not, they might have thought it was fine as well, but I just didn't, I found it more difficult to get and talk to people. Um, and, you know, and there was a fucking lot of people to, if, if, you, if you're that way inclined, to go and speak to. And again, sometimes you feel like you don't spend enough time with, with, with people. So, yeah, I didn't like that little bar. Uh, I know, I think if... Again, speaking to Daz, what we what what we should have done, what was the, probably the better idea was start off in that sort of sunroom or whatever, do all your trades and stuff, and then as the sort of night get wears on a little bit and that's all done, then fuck off into that copper jack face or whatever you call it bar because we can get a bit leery, a bit effing, a bit jeffing, a bit you know swearing. Well, I can, um, but it doesn't matter because I say it's probably the last year. If it's not and it's there again then that's what I will be doing. I'll be suggesting that I say because for me it just didn't. I don't know. It, it lacked, it lacked that sort of Friday meetup feel. Um, and it was fucking good enough anyway. Complete up nut of fucking carnage. You know, absolute fucking bedlam. <laughs> I'm not going to, you know, I'm not. There's no, there's no stories uh, or you know, whatever. Them's that were there would know what state, what happens in Blackpool State in Blackpool. But fucking hell, it was uh, yeah, madness. But anyway, we did some trades. Um, it was his Scott, Glory Hunter. Took a bag of stuff, completely forgot he had the bag of stuff under the table. Um, I say it like a... I fucking sound like that guy from the fucking cat. I say it, I say it. But because of the way it was set up, it was harder to sort of tout your wares, I suppose. Uh, I think me and Pete, me and Pete Love, I just said, I'm sticking mine on the fucking air hockey, the Sonic one, which is broken anyway. Um, but, you know... I just don't think it, it flowed very well. So anyway, but we did get some shit. We got some shit, man. Some fucking, some shit from Blackpool. <laughs> um, from my mate Rob, did a trade with my mate Rob. He had a load of Game Gear games um, at the last, last Doncast, I think it was. And um, just, uh, there's a, it's something else I'll show you in another pickups video. Anyway, so I picked up some of the stuff. But end of the day, a couple of Game Gear games I didn't have. Oh, Tom and Jerry. Mortal Kombat 2. And uh, Ivan, Iron Man's all just it's super off-road, isn't it? So many thanks to Rob. He had a couple of PlayStation 2 games. It's just a fucking... He goes, oh, I owe you a minute. No, you don't. Just fucking have them, you bastard. Stop pissing about. Um, so, yeah. Cheers for Rob for that. What else have we got? We have... From Pete, old school variety face. Um, I sent him a picture of some of the stuff that I was taking. He sort of said, Oh, what we have for that game? And no, one particular game. Uh, he said, Oh, would you trade for this one? I said, Well, that's a little bit unfair on you. So we ended up doing two games for two games, and it, so it worked out right. The one game that I needed that he had, I ain't got a fucking clue what it's about. He says it's some sort of puzzler. The brain is. It's a bit Super Nintendo. They got some snares. And the one I did have, um, but it labels quite nice on this, so I'll just check. Because mine's mine's loose anyway, and it's in the box and I'll have to dig it out. It's a produce. So yeah, worst case is I've got a duplicate that I can sort of move on. And um Pete's got one or two games that he didn't have that you know he can have a player will do whatever the fuck he wants with them. <laughs> so that was quite good. So cheers to Pete for that. Um, God knows, I can't even fucking remember buying half this stuff. Remember these? These are off Pete Love. Uh, Pete on the retro tip. He had um, was it two 
cardboard boxes of PlayStation 2 games he was giving away, and I jokingly said to someone, pick the fucking lot up and take it to CX. Uh, <laughs> and then he had a box that he was selling, and this is he had his, his, his nicer stuff in there. And he, again, he had some Game Gear stuff. Um, he had some import, like American and whatnot. Um, trying to fucking tap pawn them off onto me. I said, I don't know what it is, Pete. So I'm, I'm, at the minute, it's just pal. I'll just chip away at the pal. So I think about halfway through. Uh, in terms of games on the Game Gear, um, I think it's only up 200 and something games. Um, but yeah, two I didn't have, which is Shakan, 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 and a nice boxed Put and Putter. It's a bit of a um, crazy golf. Pete did these for a fucking absolute cracking price. Six quid Lars. He was on his fucking phone like a fucking lizard trader, you bastard. No, I'm joking. And he went six quid. And I was like, yeah, all right. Fucking madman. Absolute madman he is. Um, but it was that thing as well where I probably might have, could have bought more. Um, but you'd just spend all your fucking money, wouldn't you? And, uh, you know, it's like, just going to be a bit more frugal sometimes. But I thought, no, I'll grab them two. And a fucking six quid, man. I was like, fucking hell. That's fucking mate's rates and then some. It's a nice one, Pete. Pete Love. Um, those were from the event. I'll do them last because they were from the event. Right, another one that I'd arranged beforehand, and I think I spoke about this chap at Scott, Scott's Game Asylum in one of the previous Blackpool videos. I think I did anyway. I'm sure I did because I said I'm going to buy some stuff off of him. And some Saturn, get rid of all his last, last of his Saturn collection. Um, so I bought this game. And on reflection, it, it, it's not the one I thought it was. But thinking about it, I thought, well, it's probably easy enough playable and it's probably better than me digging mine out every time. Um, so I agreed to buy these two off Scott and this is a Progestar Deluxe Pack, which is basically just this, um, the PAL version of Produce, which I've got, obviously. Hence why, I think there's Sexy Produce and there's another Produce on the Saturn. Um, but yes, this is the deluxe pack, so focus you fucker. Um, but it's probably, you know, less wear, if that's even the word, on my power version. I can just whack this bad boy in there. So yeah, wicked from Scott. And along with that one, I agreed to buy this. And he sort of said it's a shooter. Took, showed me some pictures, so I've had a look at it. It looks a little bit like UN Squadron, and it's, um, it's a Macross game. What the fuck is it called? Super Dimension Fortress Mac Macross. There you go. Is it that way around? There you go. But um, yeah, it's got some FMVs. See, because it's fucking Japanese, it's Macross. But yeah, wicked from Scott. Lovely condition. I'm sure he got these last year from Scottish Allen, who wasn't there actually. Uh, two discs. Two discs. Never to be fucking played. You bastards. I'll say it now before you lot do. And then, the crazy motherfucker threw in this one, Necronomicon. Necronomicon. Um, he did a video on this and he said, a pinball, te uh, pinball game. Uh, apparently he's got some pretty decent soundtrack. There is no screenshot at all, so I can't show you anything other than a blank backing. Yes. D Digital Pinball Necronomicon. Necronomicon. We will see at some point. So Scott, Scott's Game Asylum, fucking lovely bloke, honestly. Um, known Scott a while now. Um, yeah, it might be something I touch upon. Uh, maybe at the end, I don't know, I'll have to think. But did me an absolute fucking stellar deal. Come up on his fucking, on the megaphone bus. <laughs> fucking cost him something like five quid all the way up to black. I can't blame him. He actually slept in, didn't he, as well. He told me he fucking slept in. So why do you only set one alarm? So I want to go to the boot, I have like fucking five alarms all five minutes after each other to get my fucking ass out of bed. He made it anyway, that's the main thing. Um, right, now from, again, this is another deal that I've done prior to going up. This chap had done a video. There's a funny story about this guy. Stuart Retro Games 1979. Now, I had 
flashback, not flashbacks, probably the wrong thing. I, I, I had that feeling that I thought I recognised him. Um, he put like a video in one of the Facebook groups, sort of say he's going Blackpool and here's his trade video. I started watching it and I was like, fucking he looks familiar. I'm sure I've seen him. Um, anyway, it turns out I, I, I had obviously seen him at some point because he's part of the retro underling, but he's sort of more behind the scenes. Um, so I messaged Steve, retro underling Steve, so I said, oh, is this, this, this guy is one of, you know, part of the retro underling family. And he said, yeah, it's Stuart. But anyway, long story short, transpires I used to work with his wife. Um, and he's, he's from, I think he's, he's still, he's from the same hometown as me, like Coventry. I'm not sure if he still lives there now, anyway. I think he might have moved. Um, but yeah, so we ended up, obviously I knew his wife. Uh, <laughs> and then obviously she was there on the Saturday. So I said I had a good chat with her. So it's what, sort of small world in that respect. Um, so yeah, anyway, Stuart did a video. And he had like a fucking massive, fucking uh, Ikea bag full of stuff. Uh, loads of different, some fucking weird and wonderful. He had one, two games on one system. I've never even bloody heard of it. And I've never even heard of it. I can't remember what, it's, what it is for the life of me. But anyway, there's two games that he's shown, and I was like, "Fucking hell, I need them bastards!" So I obviously got in contact with him, and uh, I sort of said, "Look, I've, I've got some stuff. If there's nothing you want out of my bag in terms of like a, a swap, I'll buy these off you." Because um, either way, you know, I, I sort of wanted them. One's an upgrade, and one's one that I needed. Um, so the upgrade I've got is the James Buster Douglas knockout boxing. So mine. Ah, no! Turn the cartridge. Pins need to face inwards. Ah, that's it. My life's complete now. Um, so this is basically final blow. And they've all got remembers in the arcades. Because me and my mate John used to play this. Cause such massive sprites. They've all got fucking porn star moustaches on. I'm guessing they just rebadged it for James Buster Douglas because it's called Final Blow in the arcades. I've got the Japanese version of this, actually. Um, yeah, but my box, my other ones, a little bit. I don't know if it's just the style of this box or that blue, but it always looks to me like it's really faded. Uh, but mine was no manual anyway, and this is a lot better condition. So that's the first one. And then the other one is the one that I needed. And it's not an expensive game, it's just one of them ones that fucking kept eluding me. And it's uh, super real basketball. It looks very much like. Um, Oh, what's the fucking one on the SNES? Like hit like um, ten yard fight, the basketball version. Fucking hell! Really like the cutscenes, jump cutscenes. Can't remember what the season now. Fuck. Anyway, but ah, the pins are the wrong way. Some labels in here. I can get all this label off. Fucking twenty quid, motherfucker. But yeah, nice and complete. So really happy to get that. I've seen it about a few times. It's always been missing the manual. Um, so yeah, did a swap with Stu, I think he had Resident Evil tin, uh, something out. I can't remember what it was now. Oh, I think a PlayStation game. Space Jam. I said, look, is that is there anything else you want? Because <laughs> say I just want the stuff that I need. He's pretty much like me, I think he just was just happy to get stuff that he hadn't got. There was duplicates, so wicked. Thanks Stu, honestly, really appreciate it. Nice to see Cheryl. So, um, where did I get to? Yeah, why is that stopped? That's loaded. Um, from a chap called Christopher. Let me get his name. Because his name's Christopher, but his, his YouTube channel is Christopher with a 78 in the middle. Oh, all, all these people, and everyone I mention, I'll, I'll link them down below if they've got channels. Um, Chris did a video, sort of saying he's going to Blackpool. He's from Chorley, no he lives in Chorley, he's from Scotland so he's got a real broad Scottish accent um, so I have to put the fucking subtitles on the bottom. I'm joking Chris, I don't, I don't. But he is softly, he's a softly spoken jock and it makes it even worse sometimes. And I'm just a fucking English gobshite. Um, but he had some stuff, he took a pitch, I think, no, he panned over the camera didn't he? And he had some really nice fucking like 3DS's and 3DS XR's and all that kind of stuff. But there's one game there and I thought, this is one of them games I always think I've got. And I was like, I've got that or not. And I had to go and fuck, I even went to my fucking shelf and covered the shelf. 
and checked and I hadn't got it. I said, Chris, what do you want for that? And he went, you can have it, mate. I said, no, I'll give you something. I didn't even manage to buy him a drink because it was like ships in the night. Um, so I do owe, owe you a drink. And he's really kindly gifted me Trog. On the mighty NES. Lovely condition. So um, this was played in Terminator 2. Is so Terminator 2 or The Wizard? California. I'm sure it's Terminator 2 he's playing Trog. Could be The Wizard. Um, but I never played it in the arcades. Bit of a maze, maze type game. Um, so I don't own it. So, I'm, And it'll never get fucking played. Look, let's be honest. Not fucking kid ourselves here. Stop pissing about. Stop lying. Stop lying to them, Stu. It will. It will eventually. I've got some news, actually. On, some bad news. But I'll do that in another video. I don't know like a, a general pickup video. Because there's other shit outside of Blackpool we've got as well. Because this will be long enough anyway. Right. There's fucking still more. From. A man. That I think a lot of us have... have we're really looking forward to meeting. Um, criminally undersubbed on YouTube. All these people are anyway. But this guy especially. Um, his, his depth and breadth of knowledge. Especially on the older stuff. is fucking frightening. It really is. Um, and you know what? He's one of these people that's a fucking nice guy as well. Generally. And you know. We all sort of say. Oh what you see is what you get and stuff. Although he did look. And I said this, I hope you won't mind me saying it, and I said this to a few people, and I can't I might have fucking said it to him the night, I can't remember, I was pissed as a fucking fart. But he actually does look a little bit different in real life than he does on camera. He looks you can tell it's obviously it's him, because it's not fucking face off. Um, but it's definitely it wasn't it's him. Let's go to him, brother. But he does look a little bit different on camera, and I don't know what it was. And I said it to a few people and they said, yeah, a little bit. Uh, I say it might have just been me, it might have been my fucking eyes are rolling in the back of my head. Anyway, long story short is it's Mr. Bad Paul. I say a, a fucking absolute diamond geezer. Fucking another another London that went to Cornwall, same as Chris Novaburg. But again, we'll come to all them. Um, so I did a deal with, with um, Paul. He had some stuff he was selling, um, which I found out on a local auction site. And I thought, look, I'm interested in him, mate. He did me an absolute fucking stellar deal. I paid him up. I think I gave him an extra tenner as well. I said, look, fucking fuck that. Yeah, it's just, I'll give you this much for him. So to keep him to Blackpool. So technically, I did buy him at Blackpool, but I've got him at Blackpool, so I'm including it. So suck it. Um, three off a, a collection that is yeah, it, it may never ever get completed. Who knows? But um, three Mega CD games, kids on site, shitty FMV jobby. I think there's quite a lot of these knocking about in Germany. So he's put them in these bags. It's kids on site. I'm not going to bother taking them out. There's nothing fucking amazing to see on that. Um, the San Diego Zoo presents the animals. It's just an encyclopedia. And um, pr probably one that I do want to try. Get another FMV. Supreme Warrior. <laughs> And he's, I say, he fucking really looked after me. I think he, he said, he, I'll charge you for what I paid for him. I said, well, I'll give you an extra bit of money. So give him a little bit on top. So yeah, many thanks, Paul, honestly. Did me an absolute fucking, you know, mate's rates there. Really did. It's fucking, quite an, as certain YouTubers say, quite an eclectic mixer there. Eclectic. Did I say, what did I say? Electric. Fucking dirty bastard. Talking to that particular YouTuber, um, he's just... He just did a video. He did, yeah, because I watched it. Was it last night or the night before? Um, Mr. Cool Jones, Cajones de Loro. Me man, me bruv. Um, he's one off this magazine set, which hopefully I should be able to get for him. Well, it's, it's on the cards for uh, Doncaster. Um, and it's a set. Well, I think I told him about this. And that's when I said to him, I said, There's only 24 of these. And he was like, Really? I said, Yeah. And he said, Well, that's it. I'm fucking going for it. I'm going for it. It might be the only full set he's ever fucking completed. Joking, that's joking. 
Um, but he had some duplicates. He said, I'll bring them along for you. I said, well, that's fucking nice here, mate, honestly. So he's, he's kind of gifted, traded me, I suppose, if you like. Issue 10. The Mean Machine. The Mean Green Machine. And issue 12. So, wicked. Many thanks, Darren. You are a fucking stalwart of the tubes, man, honestly. Um... And talking of Star Wars, or talking of YouTube, probably the guy I've known the longest on the tubes, I think so. There's only one other guy that I was in conversation with, and that's Aaron. Aaron Butters, Lord Butters. I think he was at fucking Doncaster one year or something. The bastard didn't come and say that. I've never met Aaron. He, he used to do videos. He, he had a full Xbox collection. God, must have been fucking eight years ago, maybe now. So I used to get games from from Game Station. We used to do trades. But this guy here, honestly, I've had more fucking piss ups, more <laughs> drank more beers or whatever with this guy than anybody. It's Craig Minx thirty six. Um, fucking the guys that yeah, love Craig. <laughs> Such a funny. Guy. Um, so I was just thinking what I told him. What we mate when Rob met him for the first time at Arcade Club. Where did we where were we? Where was that? Was it Man play Manchester and we went to Arcade Club, didn't we? And he said <laughs> and he said Craig looks like a, a twenty one year old boy's body with an old man's head on it. Because uh, obviously Craig's Craig looks after his life. He's not a fucking fat pig like I am. Um you know, and obviously he's a, he's he's a roofer, so he's you know, he's up and down fucking ladders and like fucking spider man. Um but anyway Again, Craig said to me, look, I've got these magazines. Do you want them? They just fucking give me them. Fucking crazy shit. And again, there's a bunch of meme machines. Four meme machines. Issue 20. I think he said these are duplicates. 21. They better be duplicates. 23. And 24. So without even fucking trying, you know, I've put a, a sizable dent in the fucking meme machines thing already, I mean there's only 24 magazines, there's fucking six of the bastards there already. I am getting some more at Doncaster. Um, so, because Mean Machines was, I'm not going to go into it now, but basically it was a magazine that I bought, I mean I didn't buy it religiously, but basically it's a spin-off from CVG, and again another video I'll, I'll come to, and I'll, I'll, you know, we'll have a chat about that, and the reasons why. Um, and who was I speaking to about magazines? I can't remember what it was. And the reason why I bought stuff like Meme Machines and I bought stuff like computer video games because it, it was multi-format. And I, I just, uh, you know, I was, as a kid, I just wanted to consume video games. So I didn't care where, what, what format it was, what system it was, or anything. And that was the best way to get your most bang for your buck. What was it, £1.75? You know, read, read the thing fucking back to front three times over. So many thanks to Craig, many thanks to Daz. For them, um, say 24 magazines. Oh, yes, that's easily doable. Because uh, obviously after, after 24, they split into um, official Nintendo magazine and um, Me Machine Sega. So I don't know what. I mean, I'm guessing Nintendo bought them, bought the the Nintendo side of it out rather than it being called Me Machines Nintendo. Right, we have one more lot. Again, these weren't bought at Blackpool. These were bought before Blackpool from another really good mate. He is a, he's a fucking, he's an unsung YouTube legend. Very rarely seen, especially lately as well. Um, and he's having a massive sort of thinning. He's not, he's not selling everything. People think he's selling up, he's not selling up. Um, I can't comprehend what this guy's got. I think, I'm not sure if Daz has seen it all. I don't, I've seen pictures, and the pictures are enough to make your fucking eyes bleed. Put it that way. Um, what this guy hasn't got ain't worth having. But what he has got, it's too much. And I think it's come to that sort of realisation. 
but he's not really enjoying it. Um, you know, I, I have, I've got a load of shit. Yeah. But mine's sort of semi-organised a little bit. And even in his own words, you know, he can't see the gold for all the other stuff. So, and I think what he's doing makes sense. I mean, I've done it with a few sets of, you know, I've got rid of all the Xbox to concentrate on something else. And he's doing not, not, too, not too dissimilar thing. He's just strimming away all that stuff so he can appreciate what he's got. It's Craig's ear again, anyway. Um, you know, fucking Mr. Fucking Mastercard. <laughs> fucking bastards. He loves spending other people's money, does Craig. But he's done me a fucking bout in Delia. Fucking slew of Mega Drive games. Um, you know, nothing, nothing high end in that respect. But some bloody tricky ones to get. Some, like, what he classes fodder, but because he's just done me such a good deal, he just worked out right. Um, and uh, very kindly, Daz uh, brought these up from Craig. Uh, I've had to do a few few tweaks and adjustments to some of them um, because <laughs> he's blind as a fucking bat. There was one game I've got it on the top here, so I might as well show you. I'm not. There's no real order because I said there's, there's no there's no top end title. So you know, there's some sports and some sort of you know, low low to mid-range games and stuff. Um, but this one here, I had to pull a loose cart because the cart in it wasn't the game. They do all look a little bit the same. So first up, we've got Bulls versus Lakers in the NBA playoffs. Not all of these are complete. I mean, we'll go through it anyway. It's basketball, it's Bulls versus Lakers. But this had Bulls versus Blazers in it. So I bought the cart off eBay for like fucking four quid or something posted. You know, um... This one is complete, so I've got to duplicate this because um, Steve, Sydney Steve, managed to bag me a copy of this from one of the shops he went to, but it was missing the manual. NHL 96, so it's, it's off. the NHL games, you know, always a good time. But that one's complete now. Um, this one here, I had this, but I had, well, I didn't have it at all. I had half of it because the fucking Egypt on fucking eBay. It was, it was water damage and he sent the wrong game. It was like American and it was like the third version. But this is RBI Baseball 94. So that completes all the RBI games. Um, so yeah, it's got the uh, the old man of the world. And it's got the right fucking cartridge in it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I don't know what it is about these tangent things. They have these tabs, but the, the manual doesn't fit in. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's RBI. It's RBI Baseball, motherfuckers. Um, this one can be a tricky one to get hold of. It's a blue spine! So the man, Sega Zombie Scott Brand. How did the move go, Scott? I hope you're in and well and settled. I fucking ain't moving. Horrible. Um, but needs muscle, I suppose. Anyway, blue spine. Can be semi tricky to, to, to get hold of. NFL Quarterback Club 96. This is in really nice condition, actually. Um, I don't think I've swapped the case over. There's been a lot of case swapping going on with some of these. Um, yeah, that's really nice condition. Really nice condition. Um, another one, I, no, I, you know, some people sort of, probably won't give two shits about some of these games, but to get them like this, it just it just makes it so much easier. What's that behind there? Oh, it's a fucking sticker on it. Um, this one I don't think has ever been fucking played. Not surprised. F-15 Strike Eagle 2. When I see that, I always remember, do you remember the movie Iron Eagle and Iron Eagle 2? It always reminds me of that. It's, um, yeah, probably not a very good flight sim. I mean, these are bad enough on the Amiga and stuff like that, but... <sighs> God knows what they're like on the Mega Drive. But people fucking love them, don't they? Lap them up. Lap them up. Um... Another one, there's some labels I've got to get the old, um, the old label remover on, it's not a problem. Uh, again, I don't even know where, I don't recall seeing this one out anywhere. Uh, it's Wimbledon, it's just called Wimbledon. Licensed by the All England Lawn Tennis and Croquet Club Wimbledon. So that's all it is called, it's just called Wimbledon. Just one of them weird sort of sports titles that just sort of flies under the radar a little bit somewhat. There's another one I'm trying to get hold of. It's some fucking golf game. Pebble Beach Links Golf or something. 
So you think it's a fitness game, as I said just before about some of these sports ones. You know, people just stick their pound game, but they're going to be fucking hard to get hold of. I think it's because people probably just bin them off. Right, one I had to do a case upgrade on. The contents of this is absolutely lovely. And it's balls. I got balls. Battle of the balls. Okay, you now. Sounds like a porno. Um, again, you know, there's nothing spectacular really in some of these. So yeah, Craig, look, managed to get a nice. So <laughs> the one he gave me was like fucking, like fucking American way from London had a go at it. So yeah, it looks all right. It's nice. It's it's clean and it's uh, but I say the, in, the actual internals of it were, were, were fine. Um, another one, and I'm sure there was a chap right, and he had this game. And I'm sure I asked for it. I think he sent me the wrong Pele game. So this is Pele's World Tournament Soccer. He sent me the, the Pele, with, you know, uh, picture Pele, black background, Pele in yellow. But this is the World Tournament Soccer. It's different. I'm guessing it's probably another re reskinned um, version of an a another football game. I don't know. You can probably tarry down below because um, there's a lot of that go went on back back in the day. You know, you get it licensed. A bit of a bit of a ink, a bit of pen, pen and stink, and a little bit of rubbing there. But like I say it's uh, yeah. If I want to go, Donny, I might just sort of see if someone's got like a loose cart knocking about and switch it over. But I'm not overly. It's not a deal breaker. It's it's in the corner. I'll show you. Just in the corner there. Not ideal, but it's not across the label. It's not completely fucking mullered. And it, you know, it's a sports game. It's a football game. Never to be fucking played in its life. And sit on my fucking shelf, you bastard. A lot of birds, aren't they? They might be set free. And the cager. You stick it on a shelf. But at least it had been binned. It should be recycled and turned into fucking packaging. Anyway. What am I talking to a game for? <sighs> More basketball. Balls versus blazers. Stupid, stupid bloke. <laughs> um, this was missing the manual. I bought this off of eBay. I bought a copy off eBay. Four quid complete, I think it was. The box was fucked. It was a manual I was after, but luckily enough, it, I think it was complete. Um, I think the out, I think the, the inlay was fucked as well. But the, the actual internals, which, which was what I was after mainly, i.e. the manual. But it turns out the cartridge was the cartridge better on this one. Was this crazy? I can't remember. I think it might be because it's got P on it. Um, so I've made a good copy basically out of two, two of them. So that's a win. That is a win. Um, what else have we got? We've got okay, right. So these are they're the missing manuals. So the last one that was complete, the blue Spain. This looks. I don't know what this looks like. Kick off free a little bit. Uh, Total Football, Denmark. Blue Spain. It's got brown and sick zombie. Mm -hmm. Unless that's a game in its own right. I There's only so many ways to skin a cat in terms of. This is really nice condition. So, quite a lot of Mega Drive games. There's still another five here. Um, so, the last couple here. Well, this top one is technically complete. Yeah, it needs an upgrade. Um, there's certain things I can live with. Uh, but yeah, I'm, it's not an expensive one either. But again, you know, if I get another one, I might be able to piece together, cobble together and get a half reasonable one. And it's warp speed, so another accolade. Space schmop. Oh wow, but sort of flight sim schmop. But yeah, as you can see, the corners have all popped on it. Um, so I mean, these cardboard boxes, they, you know, they're fucking hard to, to get hold of. We've got the cartridge, we've got the manual, which doesn't look too bad until you <laughs> it's missing half the back. Um, but it's there, you know, I mean, if, if, if I can get 
you know, half decent box and I have to put that into it. I can sort of live with that. At the minute, I can't really, not with that box. And I have got, what have I got here? I've got some fucking thing. Hang on. Oh, bollocks. I've got a tray in here. I've got a spare, a spare tray. There it is. There it is. Oh, shit. We can sort of make it. This is a problem with these accolade type boxes. You get these like little the cardboard things and they all fuck up, but it's not perfect, but at least it makes it look a little bit tidier. So that's one that's, I mean, it's technically it's complete. Condition wise, yeah. You know, but for, I mean, what Craig charged me? Fucking, I'd be stupid to fucking moan, and I'm not gonna moan anyway. It's just, I know. In, you know, it's just something I need to do, and if you offset it against all this, it's, it's a fucking no brainer. Right, these last four are missing the manuals, um, and these could be, I think, one or two of these will be fucking tricky to get hold of, really are. So, they might have to remain manual less. This one probably not, not should be a problem. I might just have to buy it, it'll probably be cheaper to buy the whole fucking thing again, and this block out. A uh, bit like Waltris, a Tetris in a while. I don't know if you remember Waltris. Um, it's got the game, but the manual's missing the front cover, um, and the, the boxes, like, like all these EA boxes, it always tends to split and stuff. But insert wise, yeah, quite happy with that. I say, I'd, yeah, the bottom's fucked. Look. Um, it might just be easy to buy the whole thing again. I'd say a couple of quid maybe. You know, the plan, the master plan would be <laughs> for some of this stuff, if I get a chance at Donny, is to see if anyone's got, you know, because I take boxes of loose manuals and shit like that and just see if I can cobble together and piece together all these missing um, parts. Right, so one get one, I have got the, man I've got the manual for this. It's on order. It's on order. Um, and another one, <laughs> sounds like a fucking broken record. People are like, shut the fuck up saying that shit, Stu. You do my tits in. Um, it's a sports title, and it's harder to get than you think. <laughs> oh, dear me. But it is. This is uh, this is an early release. It's got to be really early. Yeah, 1991. Um, I can't even remember this coming out, because my mate John, he was a big San Francisco 49ers fan. Uh, and you see all the other, all the latter iterations of this game. To a penny. Fucking everywhere. This first one, not so much. And it's Joe Montana football. Just Joe Montana. Not Joe Montana Sports Football. Not Joe Montana Sports Football 2. Not Joe Montana Football 93. Just Joe Montana. And quite a bland cartridge. It's not much, and I say it's, there's no manual. Now, looking for a manual for this, it, look, looking for the game, right? I think there's, I think this is for sale, like this is, like the the, um, the instructions. And it's not over expensive, but there's no complete versions. I don't think there's any ones that have even been sold. I could be wrong. It's probably probably is now. But in the weirdest twist of fate ever. I've managed to buy the manual for this game from the States. So I'm giving away all my fucking secrets here. Don't watch them other shit fucking eBay tips videos. I'll fucking tell you. I'll tell Lee. I'll tell Lee fucking lad. Um, and I've told, told you one about the, the, the obviously looking for Genesis. And that's what I did with this. Now, what instructions what was it that I was looking for? It wasn't these. I bought three instructions, three lots of instructions from this guy in, or Gil or whatever, the person in the States. And they had the, the PAL instructions, but they obviously had the, the, the Genesis ones of these. And I can't think what the other fucking game is. One of them's for the... Ma one of, the other one I've got is for the Master System, which is Astro Warrior Pit Pop. I'm sure it is. I can't remember. I've got it saved anyway. Because I've got the American version. It's... it's 
I'm going off topic now. The mask system, what they did with some of the compilations, they were different in the States than they were here. Um, no, it's not Astro Warrior Pit Box, that was a UK one. It, it's another one that's. that's uh, it's not Pit Box, Astro Warrior some else. Astro Warrior Duck Hunt. No, not Duck, Duck Hunt. That's the fucking NES. The f fucking Safari Hunt. Um, it wasn't that that I was looking for. It was the other fucking manual, and I found that manual. When I looked through the others, I've seen this one, and I've seen this, the mass system, so I managed to get them about 10 quid anyway, all the way from the States. So this is coming along. <laughs> Sure, what this fucking disastrous video is. I've got a manual for Joe Montana football, pal, from the States. It's a tip, to his tip. Sometimes people in America are not as clever as you think. Oh, fuck me. What was it while watching? Alex, Blue Tonic, and he was sending the parcel over to Manchester in England, and some the guy in, at the post office in America thought Manchester was a country. Uh, ge geography is not their forte, clearly. But from now on, when I'm looking for manuals, obviously I'm going to be looking far and wide, not just um, in the power region. Right, we're nearly there, honestly, guys. Just for the pick this is just the pickups. This is just the shit that I've got from Blackpool. These two are going to prove a little bit tricky, I think, to get manuals for. One of them, you, it's hard enough to get the fucking the, the actual game itself, you know, um, and it ain't cheap either. Same as the, the, this other one here, it's not as hard. You can, you can buy a game, but it ain't cheap. It's Madden 97. So, <coughs> the other flip side to it is, <coughs> sort of the fly. If anyone's got any of these manuals, they don't fucking, you know, they want to do a sell or trade or whatever, then let me know. Yeah, but so I've got many for Madden 97, hit me up. But yeah, it, it is manualless, sadly. Um, but it's just one of them ones I'll keep an eye out. Um, you know, the thing with the Mega Drive stuff, it's I'd, I'd like it, I'd prefer it with the manual, but it's not a fucking deal breaker. I mean, that case needs a bit of clean and wipe. We can do that. We can deal with dirt, I've always said that. Dirt's not a problem. <laughs> and the last one, the last one from the mighty crate here again. Um, I say this, this one, I know for a fact, is not a cheap game. Now there's two there's two games that this guy did well had off with licensed by this guy this guy this gay this guy it's Nigel Mansell so there's one you see the two a penny it's got his it's got his fizzog on the front then the, this is a sec I'm sure this is the latter one <clears throat> and this was done by Konami uh, the first one up in Denmark I can't remember but this is Nigel Mansell's World Championship Racing I say it's a Konami title. And it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty sought after. So, you know, good stable is, Kon well, what's Konami? <clears throat> but this is missing the manual. So if anyone has a, a, a manual for, but it has to be this version. It's not the version that's got fucking Nigel Mansell's face on. I think he's, like, cheering or something. Not that one. I've got that one. It's that one I need. Um, yeah, so what a fucking massive fucking slew. The games, Craig's here again. The fucking the man, the myth, the legend. Fucking bitter style. Look at that! Look at that! So with all that shiz, <clears throat> less the Aussie games because I'm not buying Aussie games. I'm just doing pal UK pal UK pal games, i.e. ones that you go in the fucking shop and buy. I think. <clears throat> I think there's six Aussie ones, one of which I've got inadvertently, Tony the Rooster baseball, but that's neither here nor there. Um, I think there's six of them, and so I think about 32, so what, what, 26 games for a full PAL set. And obviously that's not all boxed, that's all like CIBs and all complete in box, and, and some of them probably never will be. Um, but I'll chip away at it like I've done with the mass system, you know. I mean, no fucking rush here. Um, clearly not. <clears throat> but yeah, Craig looked after me again. God, I've got this right. Just <coughs> um, and we'll see. You know, we'll see how we get on. So there's still a couple of easily attainable games off that list. I mean, Cyberball, I need Cyberball. It's like 
I've seen that on eBay for 750. So now that the Blackpool's out of the way, um, might better manage the funds a little bit better. Um, you know, in terms of like ex expense and stuff. But then you have got fucking Christmas. So there's always something, isn't there? There's always fucking something. Right. <coughs> oh shit! Hang on. Not finished yet. Fucking gonna have to get into the can. The only two games I bought from the actual uh, um, convention, the event. Uh, <laughs> um, and from Contour Passion. And they, did, they, look, they looked after me, to be fair. To be fair, I sound like bloody Lewis, don't I? Um, got in. I don't know, did I get in there? Was it? I think a little bit just, just before it opened, I think. No, maybe half an hour before it opened. Um, Managed to get on Afterburn, <laughs> managed to get on Outrun, managed to get on Power Drift, um, played on Robotron, played on Golden Axe, um, couldn't get on that bloody Street Fighter fucking Wapham game, would I like to go on that? Went into the, the Trader Hall, I said I had a squiz round, um, seen Nathan, seen Nathan, no, Nathan Russell, nice to see Nathan, uh, spoke to Mickey Ormond, Michael Ormond as well, he would think he was helping him out. Um, yeah, and then after that, I was literally, I was really looking for some of the Mega Drive stuff, and there was just, I think Nathan had a four and three old box, and it's like 45 quid, um, which probably isn't a bad price, but you, when you look at it, it's just a fucking boxing game, but it's just one of them bastard fucking games I've got to get. Now, I can't remember if I bought these before seeing Nathan, I think I might have done. Um, and what I always do, uh, it's just something that I do, you know, it's just how I am. Obviously, spend a lot of money, right? You're going to spend a lot of money if you go to Black... Well, it depends. You might be a fucking cheapskate. <laughs> not buy any drinks and not fucking... And just eat fucking scraps off the table, but... yeah. You, and the thing is, I don't go out... That's what I say to, the, to, to some of the guys. I don't go out in the, you know, back home. Don't go down to the pub with the lads. I don't go out, you know, every two weeks and meet up with a fucking golfing lads or nothing nothing like that happens so the only time I actually really get to go on the fucking razzle dazzle and, and blow the cobwebs out is at these events so I do tend to make the most of it probably too much you know um, but fuck it and it's a week after my birthday as well but that the point I'm trying to make here is what, I, what I'm what I'm trying to be conscientious enough about is to sort of say right I need to for the, the money I'm spending I, I want to just at least I can have something tangible to sort of say like I've got that I've got that Blackpool 2018 right and <clears throat> sometimes it's cheap stuff, sometimes it, it can be relatively expensive. This one's probably relatively expensive, but I'm glad I bought it. I'm glad I bought them now, because, like I say, when I look back, although I obviously spent X money, I've got something to show, and that, that, that's the point. So these are two PC Engine games as well. So the first one is a bag of shit. I knew it was a bag of shit when I bought it. But it's just one of them ones, and it's like, I, I, I'm going to buy Golden Axe. I know I'm going to buy Golden Axe. And no matter, even though Craig says it's shit and everyone else says it's shit, I still need to buy Golden Axe. Same when I would have bought Power Drift. And it's Rastan Saga 2. I mean, there's not a great deal to look at these. There's no, um, <coughs> excuse me. There's no screenshots on the back. It's Rastan Saga 2. Pretty much akin to the, uh, the, the Mega Drive version, which is terrible as well. Bigger sprites. It, it, you know, on paper, it looks awesome. But it's not. Put it in. It didn't have a, a card holder, so I put it into one of my own card holders. The actual shoe cards in really nice condition. I'll just quickly show you. It is really clean. Some of these can go a little bit yellow, but that's um, yeah, quite nice. So we've got a Rastan Saga two, and. Uh, There's a few other games I was sort of looking at, totting them up, and then the big, the big one, the big hitter. I'll, I'll try to take the price after in, in a minute. Is um, Air Zonk PC Dungeon, which is basically Air Zonk. This is the Hue Card version. There is a CD version, which is quite considerably more expensive. Uh, it just does, does have screenshots. So it's a schmop. You might have seen this on BitEd's channel if you watch BitEd. If you don't watch BitEd, <coughs> stop what you're doing. Don't watch me. Go and watch BitEd. Um, just show you a bit more without the uh, the creepy plastic bag on it. But this one does just come with the, the little holder. Um, so yeah, speaking to Andy and his mate, 
<laughs> so I said, look, I'm going to get these two games. I said, no, you better look after me. Um, obviously, Andy's a busy bloke. So he left it to his mate. And his mate did. So we've got, I mean, combined, he did me then for 94 quid. Which is not bad. It's a five, I think it's five or off. If my math is correct, I think it's a five or off. Yeah. Fiver. <laughs> it's a fiver off. Do oh, you dickhead? Um, to say it's nice to have some. I can say, like, I've got these. Got these at fucking Blackpool 2018, um, and that is all the stuff I've got. That's it. I say two things for the event, but the event isn't like that. So, say coming back round to the actual event itself, um, and I said just a few people before said it last year, etc. You know, it's not a market. Don't go there thinking there's going to be loads of fucking trader halls and get pissed off. Ooh, there's nothing to buy. It's not about that. It's not about that. You, get, you can get a couple of nice things. Sometimes, you know, I've got some of the best things I've ever bought just from that, you know, five fucking vendors. Sometimes you, you come away with very little. It's just how it is. Um, but don't go there thinking you're going to fill your boots uh, with booty, you know, like you would do at the, at the video game market. That don't happen. But... You know, overall, I thought that it, you know, from a, a weekend, because I mean, I went in the event, and especially some of the guys hadn't been before, and like they probably saw me sat outside thinking, why are not you going in there, Stu? Because, to be honest, a lot of the machines I've, I've, I've played on already, um, a lot of stuff that I would play on I've already got, um, you know, and obviously I've looked around the vendor hall, and I'm, I'm pretty much done there. And it's some, for me, it's not about that, it's not about the actual. <laughs> The event itself, it's just about the meet up, it's about getting together with the lads. Like I said, don't fucking. I've got really any. I've got friends, but I haven't got any mates like when you were not like, fucking in the early 20s that you go out on the lash with. That doesn't happen. So that, that's. This is my blowout, that, that's what I do, you know. And that's, that's just me. I'm not sort of saying that's what everyone should fucking do. You do what the fucking hell you like, you're all grown men, you know. You <coughs> make your own mistakes. <laughs> um, but that's just how I that's how I look at it, and I enjoy spending time with with and meeting new people and and old alike. Um, and I, yeah, and I, it's not I like it when other people go and they haven't been before, and then they, they you get that sort of buzz off of them. I think that's quite nice uh, in a weird sort of voyeuristic way. It's not want to go arcade club. You know, I play a shitload of games. Most of the time, I stand there chatting. Having the banter and taking the piss and with all the lads and, and you know, all my mates and that's, but it's it's the backdrop, it's the setting that, that makes that happen for me. But yeah, I, I thought it was it was a. I managed to go out on a Saturday night. I didn't go out. Didn't go, didn't go to town on the Friday. Uh, I think one or two lads went up on the Friday, <laughs> and I say that's for them to to, to disclose or not to disclose. Um, I had to have a sleep on the Saturday. I had to set to set up, I've got to go and have an hour, mate. Um, so I had a bit of a kip because I say I'm just getting fucking old and I needed it. But we were out, we were out razzle, we on the razzle dazzle on the fucking Saturday night and it was a good night and uh, it's quite good because I mean, I didn't even think about this. It, obviously, it's Halloween, so they're all, they're all dressed up, all in fancy dress. You know, some great, great costumes, men and women alike. Obviously, some of the women are like fucking, oh my god. Um, and then, you know, it's just how it is, that's just Blackpool, isn't it? But uh, yeah, we should have. If we thought about it properly, yeah, I'm always up for a fucking laugh and a giggle, you know, and having a having a laugh. So it would have been quite nice actually to get dressed up, but yeah, hey, yeah, you live and you learn. Um, but it was a really fucking good night, you know, and, and it was weird because there was different people throughout the night on the Saturday, um, different groups. So it was just me and Rob, and then we met up with um, the sort of northern tubers, and then. Craig Minx turned up with um, Fagan, Sean, and then they went, and then Chris Novabug turned up with Steve, and I think we ended up staying with them for the most of the night then. And it was, like I say, it just ebbed and flowed that way. It's really good, really good, really enjoyable night. Completely, absolutely mullered. Uh, I mean, I've had way too much um, uh, bud on the Friday, so on the Saturday night, it was literally like, I can't, I can't, can't, can't. So it was just like vodka and Red Bull. <clears throat> just to try and fucking give me some fake energy, I suppose. Because if I'd been on that, I would have been asleep. Right. Before, like I say, um, no, scrap that bit. We'll do this now. 
So I'm going to attempt the roll call. And if I've missed you off, I really, I, I'm really, really sorry. Um, and I say all these people have got channels. I'll put them down below. So we have my mate Rob. He obviously hasn't got a channel. Don't know why Rob make a channel. Lewis and Amanda, absolute fucking gold in them pair. I love them guys. Uh, Scott Glory Hunter. I mean Scott fucking scoured, scoured the hall, man. And found probably is it two copies or one copy of Modern Warfare Two. So he was CX Rich. Um, Gareth from the Man Cave, little Gareth, lovely chap, honestly. Um, go and okay, check all these people out anyway. Um, Craig, bearded man child. So, I've seen Craig all but briefly. If, um, I was trying to get the fucking pinball table actually, I think his son was playing it. Um, so, he's, he's elusive in his own right. Uh, Pete, old school variety face. I mean, if you don't watch Pete's stuff and you want some completely different and absolutely brilliant go and watch Pete Mike without further ado retro fucking Mike let's get ready to rumble retro <laughs> from what I heard again I'll leave that story to him um, my mate Daz Kojo Delaro you, know, you must all fucking know Daz stalwart of the community um, this bastard fucking had me hook line and sinker he really did Fair play to him, man, because he's, he's fucking better at keeping the secret I would be. Mr. fucking Dana himself, Dainster83, and Liam. Great to see them, guys. Didn't even... I walked into the Norbrek, looked at the back of his head, and I thought, that's fucking Dana. I know that's Dana. But I weren't sure, because I wasn't expecting him to be there, because he said he couldn't come, and I was used to take the piss out and say, you know, his missus wouldn't let him. Um, and not until I got a bit closer, because my eyes are failing me, actually. Not until I got a bit close, I'm like, that's fucking Dana. So I'd give him a wet willy. Um, and I think he was expecting to see me before I saw him. But absolutely brilliant. I mean, you know, them pair, Liam was a ledge, absolute legend. Um, t takes the heat off me somewhat, let's put it that way. Again, that's for them to disclose that story. Um, the man Pete Love, Pete Armour. Um, you, all, you all should all know Pete by now. Um, love this guy, a South African chap. <laughs> no, Paul, Big Daddy C, a uh, lot of time for Paul, absolutely fucking hilarious. So this, I'll say this is sort of, I'm just going through a lot of groups of people, so these are technically the Northern Tubers. Um, Lee calling all nerds, me and Lee had a really good chat actually, it, it was really um, honest I think, it's probably the right word, but yeah, really good, really good to chat with Lee. We make Gruss, Gruss Newton, really nice to meet <laughs> I think Gruss just goes into his little bubble, which is what I like about him. He's just, I don't know, he's just like, he's there but he's not there and he just does his own thing. I quite like that. And <laughs> See, I know this guy's Paul. And then when I sort of said, oh, where's Paul to Lee? He's like, who's Paul? He's like, Paul. Fucking Paul. He's like, no, I don't know who Paul is. And then Paul walks up. I said, that's Paul. He went, that's Ellis. I said, that's his last name. So Paul Ellis, Paul on the back wheel. <laughs> Paul, this is fucking, Lee's known him for like six years and he just knows him. I don't know what his name was. I said, well, look, that's Paul. Paul, meet Lee. Oh, hilarious. Like I say, it's just absolute fucking carnage. Absolute carnage. Um, Steve, Addy Sneaker Freak. One of those anomalies within our sort of geeky retro community he, he, he likes games but his channel is all about as it suggests adidas trainers and very successful he is too um some of the retro and contingent mr retro and himself steve fucking I, 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 again i can't remember how we even at the end it was me him craig and was it Novabug at the end i can't remember and then me and steve because we're liverpool fans <laughs> trying to sing liverpool chants forgetting the words and remembering the words Oh, it's fucking car. It was just, it was just carnage. The whole night was car good job. It's fucking Halloween because it was, it was fucking like a bloodbath. Uh, Mr. Novable Chris himself, absolutely fucking. I love Chris. A lot of time. My doppelganger, maybe, maybe not. Uh, Paul, Mr. Bad spoke about Paul already. Um, again, absolute cracking bloke. Scott, Scott's game asylum. Scott's game asylum. Mentioned Scott already. Um, Dutch contingent, less the Valter, uh, Mark Verheer, Lacto Lactobilius Prime, and Erwin Costado. I think, 
think Erwin was the only guy who bought anything off me. I did my deal on the Outrun, copy of Outrun on the Mega Drive. Bloody nice condition that was as well. Um, so yeah, really nice to, to meet them guys. I think Mark was introduced me to some lady, and I, 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 I thought at first was it his wife? But I think his wife looks different. I can't remember because I'm sure I've met his wife before, but I don't know. I, I, I have fucking ten sheets to the wind, so I'm sorry, Mark. But I'm sure he's, he was saying she's got a YouTube channel. Uh, the retro Godfather Dow. Fucking Dow. Poor Dow, man. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. Again, like I say, I'll leave that for, for, for Dow to tell that story. But let's just say his little face lit up on a Saturday. And I think that's down to Pete. Pete Love, who I think he helped him out there because I knew he was in a bit of a pickle. Um, yeah, always a good time to, to with, with Dow. Always a good laugh. Uh, Sean RS5, uh, Fagan's RS500. Nice to meet Sean. He was up there with his mate, Future Matt Five. Um, I've met Matt before at Manchester one year. Um, yeah, a little bit. I don't know. I think he, that he's got his circles, and that's about it. He looked a bit like Doctor Who on the Saturday. I thought. Um, there's a lot of discussion going on about where to eat. So that was a big deal for them guys. Um, but yeah, really nice to see Sean. Obviously, came on the Saturday as well. Um, the old bastard. <laughs> um, I mentioned Stuart, Retro Games 1979. I didn't see him on the Saturday night. I think a lot of them went for a meal um, and, and stuff, so I think he, he may have tagged along to that. Uh, Chris, which is Chris Chris with a 78 in the middle. So obviously, that's his birth year. Um, spoke about Chris, the guy from Chorley, the Scottish guy from Chorley. Uh, Minx, we make Minx. Spoke about Minx already. Um, two people that are not real, well, they're not YouTube, they do watch YouTube. It's, it's um, I'm sure it's Steve. Is it Steve? Fucking hell. And there's Mrs. Amy. I'm sure it's Steve. Oh my God. Anyway, it was their daughter's birthday, so she was there as well. So she was like getting big now. She's running around and that and enjoyed it. So it's nice to see that. I'm sure it's bloody Steve. I'm getting... Was it Paul? Paul. Not Steve. Too many people's names. It's Paul. Paul Ashley, isn't it? Sorry, mate. Um, fucking hell. I don't know why I wrote that down there. Um, James from Let's Talk Retro, <laughs> really nice, I've had a chat with James about his arcade machine, go and watch that fucking video, that's awesome, he, he basically reconned, oh what was it, not an outrun, he turned it into an outrun, well, badge wise, oh bloody hell, but he did a fantastic job, really, really, really good, I mean like took his time, did it properly, fantastic video to watch that, I really enjoyed that. Um, Talk about Mickey Almond, Michael Almond, um, not really a YouTuber per se, but he's, he's big on the Facebook, you know. Uh, always at the events and stuff. Ben. Benjamin, Benjamin, Benjamin Shemuso. <laughs> Fucking too many wacky fags, mate, on the Friday night. I think he walked around everywhere but in the Norbrek bar, the actual bar that we were in. Um, seen him on the Saturday, it was nice to, to sort of see Ben. Ben's always a good time. always got stories to tell and he was obviously I bumped into him initially in uh, the trader hall and he was mate Adam Adam Korolik I think he was doing something on the one of the panels or, or something I just shook his hand and said hello I don't, I don't really know who Adam is to be honest um, but yeah really nice to see Ben uh, another guy who was it uh, Tom um, what's his fucking YouTube name now he doesn't do YouTube anymore but he's part of the Dreamcast junkyard nice to see Tom Bloody hell. Um, and then, what else have we got? Oh yeah, this just trap here. Don't know who he is. He'd left a message on one of my old Blackpool videos saying, oh, just found this, I'll be coming this weekend. And um, it was like being the bar fly that, that we all are on a Saturday. And he walked past. Well, I recognised his face and said, oh, hello, mate. You made it, this, that, and everything. He was there with his other chap. And all I know is his, his YouTube name is, is Sorak Space. So I've just got here, said hello. So hello, Sorak Space. Um, I'll say I've subbed to him, so hopefully he'll make a video. Uh, but it was, like I say, it's just, I don't know how many people that is. You can fucking count them up. Hang on, let's do it. Thirty odd, 
30 odd maybe. There's probably more, I say I don't know everybody. There was a chap uh, on the Sunday before we went to go. Uh, he looked like my old geography teacher, Mr. Snart. Uh, it turns out he's, he's, he's quite a big YouTuber. I don't know, he, like I say, he looked like a geography teacher to me. You know, nice enough chap. Didn't really speak to him. A uh, few of the, 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 the guys knew him um, and just sort of said, you know, hello, goodbye to him. I'm just fucking worried I forgot somebody and someone's going to go like, you fucking bastard, Tinty. You can piss off and not speak to you again. I'm sure there is. I'm sure there's. I'm going to upset someone. It'd be someone like that I've known for like fucking eight years. That's the best I can do in my adult state. Um, yeah, to round it off, I, th I thought um, it, I just would have liked the Friday to have been like the old Fridays. I know that's kind of asking a lot. And some of the guys there who've been the first time probably thought it was that it was it was great, or maybe they don't. I don't know. Um, but knowing how good it could have been, I just a little bit part of me just thinks we could have done with a little bit of that. Um, because it did felt like it was pocketed too much on the Friday. Um, but I didn't go town, but I did drink too much. Um, didn't have any food, that didn't help because we were so fucking late. I said that this to Rob, I said, you know, the idea was to get there for, you know, three o'clock, half three, or three o'clock-ish. Maybe get a bite to eat and then go over. And that. It, just didn't, it just didn't work out. Best laid plans and all that always fucking fail, don't you? So it is what it is. It's done, it's dusted, on to the next. Um, but yeah, I say in closing, for, for probably what might be the last event, I think that was a really good swan song for, for the Norbrek. Um, it is what it is. We may be back there next year um, in terms of the Norbrek. We might not, it might be the Winter Gardens. But other than that, I say anybody that I've missed off, I dearly apologise. Anybody else said hello to, or said hello to me. And I didn't mention you or whatever. Uh, always a pleasure, always a blast. Um, hopefully, I didn't upset anybody. I don't think I did this year. I think I might have been <laughs> doing quite well. I think I passed the mantle on to somebody else, um, which is quite nice uh, sometimes. But yeah, great stuff. And many thanks to everybody that came along. You really made the weekend, guys. Take it easy. I'll speak to you soon. Bye bye.